Hello and welcome back Velocity Banking students, Kingdom citizens, loyal subscribers, and new people. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, your personal finance geek of the 21st century. In this video today, we're going to be looking at a infinite banking case study. Uh, two year, we're two years in, approaching our third year in December of 2022. I'm recording this video in June of 2022. So this particular case study, this person has uh, funded their policy two times so far on an annual basis. So let's dive right into it. On the board, we have a individual, 48 year old male at the time, putting the policy in place. We're dealing with a uh, Guardian Life Insurance Company funding $60,000 a year. And we've designed it where we're giving ourselves the ability to max fund $60,000 a year for 18 years. Okay. The minimum base premium is $6,000. In between six and 60 grand is the difference of money, dollars, that goes into the cash value portion. And of that cash value portion, there's a term rider. Sorry about that. There's a term rider expense. There's a PUA fee, uh, sales load charges. So there's these additional fees and costs when uh, p applying for one of these uh, types of policies, we're trying to minimize that cost as much as humanly possible, according to the insurance company's uh, limitations. That's the goal and maximize high early cash value, short term and long term performance. So 60 grand a year, 18 years, $6,000 base premium. Death benefit is $2.825 million. The uh, cash value today is somewhere around $103,000. Okay, like I said, we're in year two, approaching year three. So he'll be getting ready to dump in another 60 grand towards the end of 2022. Last time I checked, they had a policy loan out for $31,400. And the loan interest rate with Guardian back in uh, prior to 2022, the loan interest rate is 5.66%. Um, anyone that gets a policy in 2022 and moving forward, the loan interest rate will be less, I believe somewhere around four to 5%. Uh, depending on the insurance company, it can be as low as 3%, the uh, loan interest rate. Always fundamental to know your numbers. What do I mean by that? You need to know what's coming in, total income per month, expenses, total outgoing expenditures, your debts, your living, tithing, saving, investing, know where every single dollar goes, what's left over, that cash flow, right? Total debts, list it all out, see where you stand financially before putting one of these policies in place. Every time I work with my clients one-to-one, -one, or if you're working directly with IBC Global, which is a partner uh, with the Finance Geek, finance geek ministry, right? Everything that I'm doing here, um, they will be the agency that primarily works with the majority of you. Unless you're a one-to-one -one client of mine, coaching client of mine, I will uh, deal with you directly, right? It's part of the process anyways. It's one of the things that will address in your personal finances and being able to maximize your savings, improve that, all that good stuff. So when you're working with IBC Global, they're going to provide all the education, uh, breaking down the cost, the fees, um, commissions, you any questions you got. They have so much content that goes very, very deep into the strategy itself, right? And the, the product itself, which is great. And then you can lean on me for uh, financial strategies once you got the policy in place, right? What do you do with it then? Or, you know, if you want to incorporate velocity banking and infinite banking together, to maximize cash flow efficiency. That's a you know huge bonus there. So there's a lot of great things that we can do once the policy is in place. Before you get it in place, you wanna have your fundamentals in line. You don't wanna have buyer's remorse. You don't want to over expect something that this uh, account will do, but not have the strategy to go with it. And now you're just kind of left with a big bill, 60 grand a year, right? You, we want to make sure we have the strategy in place. We know how much we're going to fund, how long, right? We want to have these, you know, run some worst case scenarios. These are like my little fundamentals here and really know why you're doing it in the first place. Be able to mathematically make sense of funding an asset where I put money in 
day one, right? Full transparency. I put money in day one and I have less than what I started with. We have to make mathematical sense of that, right? Why does it make sense for me to put $60,000 into an account and then have less than 60 grand to work with? Wouldn't I be better off having that 60 grand in my checking account, in my savings account, in a stock market account? That answer might be yes. And if that is a yes, don't do this, right? Not yet, you're not ready. You don't fully comprehend what's happening here. You don't fully comprehend the concept until you fully comprehend it, why we're doing what we're doing. Then you begin to say, okay, I'm willing to take a loss here to have a massive gain here. It's just like investing. I'm, I'm willing to invest, take on this massive risk here for massive reward here, right? We need to be able to separate what is an investment from what is not, right? When we're looking at cash value life insurance, this is not an investment. So you have to take off the investment hat of returns, 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 and think protection, liquidity, safety, tax-free. These are the conversations that you have with yourself. Make sure you're doing the right thing. So coming back to the board here, these are the numbers. Um, one of the things that I went over with this particular client was figuring out how much we want to fund and for how long and running a worst case scenario. One of the cool things about infinite banking, it's a pro and also a, a, a can be a con, is the fact that there's a ton of different ways that we can incorporate the concept in terms of the strategy once the policy is in place, right? What do we do with the cash value once it's in place, but also the policy design, okay? Um, just looking at the way the numbers are laid out here, this particular design is a 1090, okay? 10% of the dollars going in 10 percent is going to premium whole life insurance the other 90 percent is being pushed into cash value trying to get as much money into cash value as humanly possible this is one way of designing a policy which gives you minimum expense up front maximum cash value it's really not a whole lot of different uh, ways to put it but when we're designing a policy there's a ton of different ways in terms of how you can put these in place now i'll give you the range this is a personal opinion just from uh, i'd say experience and talking with tons of different insurance agents and watching tons of content what i have seen in the marketplace you'll get policies um either as low as 10 percent base premium to as high as 60 40 right where 60 percent of the money is going to uh, cash value and 40 percent is going to base premium this is the range what i typically see and then this is just my personal opinion anything above 60 40 is like a no-go for me right it's too much money in my opinion that's going to cost of insurance rather than cash value so if we see a 50 50 split that means 50 percent of sixty thousand dollars went to whole life insurance expense so that'd be 30 grand and then the other 30 grand goes to cash value. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to have, no matter which design you go with, right? Taking a look at, say, say you were looking at a 50-50 split. Even when you have 30 grand going to base premium and 30 grand going to cash value, there is a PUA charge, PUA fee called paid up additions. There's a fee that will minus from the 30 grand. So you'll have maybe roughly 27, 28, 29 thousand or so starting cash value day one if i were to go with a 50 50 and then you can go through it right you can whether you're talking to a multitude of agents or maybe two or three or just one you can ask them hey show me uh show me a 50 50 show me a 60 40 show me 7 30 show me a 90 10 show me a 80 20 right show me it all show me all the options if you get an agent that's willing to do that for you i think you have a pretty good agent they're willing to be fully open honest and transparent provide you all the different uh you know options and then you make a decision from there me personally because of what i'm doing outside of the policy which is investing and co-vesting i choose to minimize my insurance expense as much as humanly possible according to the insurance company's limitations have as much cash value up front to have long-term 
and short term performance in the account itself, but then also out of the account. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and share my screen to show you the illustration, give you a little more details, I have more meat and potatoes. And then we'll come take it back to the whiteboard. And then I encourage comments, questions, feedback, things like that uh, as we go through the uh, uh, content. And I will do my best to answer your questions. Here is a Guardian Life Insurance Policy and Enforce illustration. Real account, real policy. This is Enforce, right? The person was 48 at the time of issuing. Current status, not a mech, right? That's ideal. We don't necessarily want to create a mech when we are max funding these policies so when we're designing a policy we're setting the mech limit higher than what we're putting in for the amount of time that we're funding that policy for to avoid the mech we'll also do a mech test where you can basically run the run the illustration with just the guarantees no dividends just the guarantees to see if the policy becomes a mech. And if it does not, there's safety in that as well. Uh, there's a lot of concern, I think, in the marketplace, a lot of you know valid questions, people worrying about um, having a, a small base premium uh, because of their fear producing a mech, okay? It's not like flicking a light or tripping over something and then you just cause a mech. That ain't gonna happen. The insurance company will notify you in advance such and such your insurance agent will be notified well in advance if your policy is approaching mech status and it is very easy very simple to avoid a mech to adjust the policy to make sure that the policy does not become a mech right if that's our intent some people intend to create mechs Typically with the design of infinite banking, that's not really the goal. When you're practicing infinite banking, the goal really isn't to produce a mech. And like I said, it's not like you just by mistake create a mech. That's not going to happen, right? You don't mistakenly make a mech. Like you can read it in the policy contract. You know, it says if X, Y, and Z happens, if dividends go down, then a mech could potentially occur. Well, then if we just go off the guarantees, and see does a mech occur and then we look at okay well how long am i funding the policy for if i if the initial illustration right and we'll go to the initial illustration this is the original illustration of the account 48 year old non-smoker right premium six grand that gives me 316,000 whole life insurance then we've got term 2.5 million uh this is annual renewable term or one year term insurance in the amount of two thousand three hundred thirty nine dollars uh, no no that's the death benefit 2.3 million dollars and the term cost is 2105.32. And then we scroll down. So that's the breakdown of the 60 grand. And then we can see, okay, day one, right? I pay 60 grand. I have roughly 50,000, just under 51,000 starting cash value. Okay, so that means I threw 60 in, I lost 10. That's technically what that means. The policy is negative. We wanna provide that transparency. We wanna see that up front. We don't wanna set unrealistic expectations thinking that year one, oh yeah, I'm gonna earn 5%, 6%. No, 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 no. You're negative. It takes a few years for it to break even. Then eventually you start netting two to four, upwards of 5%. Netting after insurance expense. Here is the uh, face amount of one year term, right? Right there. 2.3, right? Same number. Okay, cool. And then notice how year to year that number starts to drop. Why? Because my 60,000, the six grand plus the other 53 that went to cash value in term is purchasing permanent whole life insurance. Total face amount of additions, additional life insurance that I'm owning more and more year by year, year by year, year by year. So the total death benefit 2.825 million out the gate. That number stays the same with Guardian for the first 18 years. If this person funds the policy for 18 years, 60 grand a year each year, they would have put in a total of a million eight. That's how much they saved over an 18 year period. They'd be 65 years old. And then it says uh, net cash value be somewhere around 1.379 million. And notice how that term rider will drop off after the funding period is over. So that reduces our cost and allows the cash value to start performing a little bit better. 
In addition, if we want, we can also remove the $6,000 expense, right? The premium. That would be called a reduced paid up insurance where the policy is paid up and then no more funding is required. No more funding is, is needed. And now you just have an ever increasing personal tax-free line of credit that you can use at your disposal whenever you want. That's to your discretion. That is an option. You could say, all right, um, I want to continue to pay just the base premium after the, the max funding period of 18 years. This is why it's important to know how much money you want to pay in, right? And you can map that out in your own personal finances, just like this person did. They said, look, this is how much money I want to save, want to put away. This is not how much money they're investing, how much money they're giving, tithing. This is protection that they're putting in place. And that protection starts to yield a positive gain, provides that death benefit protection and that living benefit of the cash value. After they see the numbers, they're like, okay, I'm happy with that. I can live with that. I look at the guarantees, I look at the non-guarantees. Okay, I'm happy, I can live with that. Cool, so we come over to the Enforce illustration. We're in 2022, so this assumes that they would have paid the 60 grand by that time um, and there'll be 129 cash value but that's with the uh that's not including the loan of 31,400 so when you add those two numbers together the total cash value will be that number in the meantime we're somewhere around here where he has roughly somewhere around 72,000 in available cash value with 31,400 outstanding. So he's got a little over a hundred or so thousand dollars in total cash value, right? With that outstanding loan, right? So this is uh, an in-force illustration, which you can acquire every year on the anniversary date, which is the ideal thing to do with your insurance agent. Check in before the anniversary date of each year. Um, after you've funded it, then you can produce a in-force illustration, get the most accurate reading on how your policy is doing compared to the illustration. So let's take it back to the whiteboard. To recap, this individual is funding a policy to save money, to improve their savings dollars, to redirect savings from banks, they don't feel comfortable, they don't feel safe storing their money at the bank, earning nothing. So they move it into a location where they can earn money tax-free according to the tax code, which is great, so it provides that layer of protection. This particular tax code has been benefiting business owners, major banks, corporations for over 150 years, not bad. So there's safety and guarantees in the product itself and the strategy itself person's redirecting their emergency funds or pulling emergency funds out of the bank into cash value life insurance, removing the sinking funds, and they're redirecting investment capital, money that they had on hand that was ready to be deployed, and they're just parking it in the policy itself, and then they're going to deploy it kind of like they did here. They took $31,000 out, and they're going to deploy that money, right? So the first year, that's what they did. They threw 60 grand in. Of the 60 grand, a big portion of that was savings dollars. Another portion of that was money that they intended to use already, and now it's getting two uses, right? So that 31,400 is getting two uses. Does that make sense? This 31,000 was originally sitting in their checking account, let's just say. And they said, I have an intent to invest that money and they're going to earn whatever rate of return so that money has already been intended to go out into an investment but they saw the value of infinite banking concept cash value life insurance and they said okay i'm gonna move my savings dollars which will cover the cost of the insurance and then some i'm gonna redirect my emergency funds because that money will just sit there it'll be available and i'm gonna redirect my sinking funds money's just there it's available if i need it and then my investment dollars that I intend to invest with, I'll just simply pull from it and invest. I'm willing to borrow from myself this money along with the other dollars, right? That 50, just under 51,000 is going to start producing earnings. Day one, it's going to start growing. The money will start to grow. Okay, so 31,400 will grow forever in the policy itself at a guaranteed rate of return and then we'll have a net internal rate of return after the first say four or five years start producing one two three and then it works its way up to four four and a half and now this 31 400 maybe is earning 15 20 100 percent returns outside of the account so they saw the different 
options. They did their homework and they said, yeah, you know, I want to stick with minimum base premium and have as much cash value as possible up front because of what I'm going to do with the policy. And I want to, um, you know, run some worst case scenarios as well. Like, let's just say we did this with my client here. Where we're like, look, worst case scenario, we uh, we fund the 60 grand one year and then we do it again the second year, no issue. Uh, let's just say year three, you lose your job, your main source of income. You were investing, you were trying to, you know, supplement your income. You were trying to build a second, third stream of in income. But then, you know, uh, a market crash happens or a market correction or recession or another COVID or whatever, right? Something happens in the marketplace, you lose your job. And now year three anniversary date comes up and you're no longer able to commit to 60 grand. Well, your base premium requirements only six plus the term and PUA charge to give ourselves the ability to fund up 60 grand. So by no means are we obligated to fund 60K every single year. We're not obligated, but that's the goal. The only real obligation is the minimum base premium of six grand to keep the policy in force. And the beautiful part is we can always make up for lost time. So let's just say year three, they only paid in the six plus the term and PUA expense charge, which might run them, that might be a total of eight grand, right? So from 60 grand to eight grand, we ran the numbers and we were like, yeah, I can fund $8,000 in my sleep, even with a job loss, right? We ran these numbers, even with a job loss, even with you know, out of work for multiple months, say six months, nine months. He's like, I can do eight grand. I can do 10 grand. I can do 15 grand with my eyes closed versus let's say they did a 50, 50 split or 60, 40. Let's just use the highest one. They would have to figure out how to fund 30 grand, 30 grand a year. That's their minimum requirement. This is why I also avoid designing policies this high in premium expense because of the what if scenarios because of the worst case scenario like hey worst case scenario we just pay in the base plus the term pua and then we rebound right we get back in 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 the groove and then year four year five you make three x what you were making the previous year and we can always do a makeup contribution of fifty thousand dollars from year three and 60 grand for year four. So you can put in a total of 110 and get caught up. Now, obviously that policy would not perform equal to the person that put in 60 grand each and every year on the anniversary date, but at least I don't lose on that, you know, on that, uh, on that cash value on that, on that, on those earnings, right? Unlike a, uh, whatchamacallit, like a Roth, right? Unlike a Roth or if I'm not mistaken with 401ks as well, if you don't get the money in that year, you, you lose out on that ability to earn money on those dollars versus with this, I can always make up for it. And not just year to year, I mean, we can go five years out and I can still make up for year two. If I'm five years, 10 years into it, I can still make up. I don't lose what's called mech space. I retain my mech space, not bad at all. So one more quick recap, know your numbers, know how much you wanna fund a policy when you get positioned, know how long and how do we minimize the cost for the amount of money you wanna put into a policy, right? We can customize it down to the dollar to minimize expense as much as possible and maximize cash value in the short term and the long term of that policy. After you've gone through that whole funding phase, we can do either a reduced paid up, lock up the account, we don't have to pay into it no more, that's an option, or we can just pay the minimum base premium of say six grand. And I don't have to worry about my account becoming a mech. The issue is if this client was uninformed by me and they say, yeah, I want to pay in 60 grand for 18 years. And then 18 years goes by. And then year 19, they're like, then I want to pay in another 60 grand. Well, that might require some additional medical and underwriting. And that could maybe potentially produce a mech. So if the client not educated, not informed of this by the agent, that can cause buyer's remorse, right? They don't want to be put into a situation where they were like, oh, I thought I could do this, but now I can't. That's how policies become mechs, is when the client doesn't know what they're doing with the policy itself. You could have the worst policy, right? With the worst insurance company. You're only gonna produce a mech if you misuse the design itself. 
right? If you if you funded it according to what was illustrated, there really should not be an issue as long as we looked at the the mech limit, the mech tests on the guarantees. We really shouldn't have an issue. And even if you did run into an issue, insurance company is going to notify you in advance. Email insurance uh, insurance agent gets notified. Even if you did produce a mech, it can be reversed. Right, so it's not the end of the world. It can be reversed. So those things can be fixed, right? So I just wanted to share those things with you. If you're ready to take action, I recommend IBC Global, Steve Parisi. He's got a YouTube channel. He creates a lot of content on this. He's really great. Um, you may or may not, you know, work with him individually, uh, but the agents on the team are phenomenal. You got Samantha, there's Phil, there's Brandon, uh, there's another Steve, there's um, uh, Stephanie, um, these these people have been, I mean, day in and day out, constantly uh, presenting infinite banking, cash value life insurance, minimum base, maximum cash, customizing designs. They're day in and day out, day in and day out doing this constantly. I want to say a hundred plus or so of my clients have already gone through the, through the process. Hundreds of my clients and viewers have gone through the process. Maybe not all have put policies in place, but they've gone through the process. They know what to expect. There's full transparency. Nobody's pushing you to do anything, right? It's very, very key. We want to make sure we plug a great concept with your numbers. Drop my marker again. We want to combine your numbers with the concept and make sure this stuff is airtight, right? We don't want to make a mistake. We don't want to set unrealistic expectations. We want to set realistic expectations, what we can do with this and what we can accomplish. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, personal finance geek of the 21st century. Have a wonderful day. God bless. And we'll be talking soon.